Here are all the corals from Joker Coral. I was able to stretch the silicone tube to fit. The second batch of the baby brown shrimp that I'm hatching. She's a lot more aware than those two other fish. Those other fish are kind of... Hey, what's up, Reverse? Today is another really exciting video because as the tanks come to maturity, I'm starting to add fish, add corals, and just... It's a big tank. I have to stock it. Today, we're gonna unbox a box of coral that I bought from Joker Coral. And I've been talking Joker's coral for at least nine months at this point. The Joker Coral is based out of Georgia. And one unique thing about Joker Coral besides the high-end ad corals and high-end corals is that they actually run a Chinese-speaking uh, reef chat on WeChat. Now, I don't go on WeChat too often these days, but whenever I do, I do check in on that group once in a while and see what's going on. It's always packed with activities. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll see if I can leave a link in the comment below. As soon as I figure out how to share like WeChat group links. Anyways, they are a good friend and without further ado, let me go ahead and unbox this box. He packed, still warm. Oh, <laughs> nice. And looks like it is custom printed for Joker Corals as well. Here we go. Oh, I like, thank you for uh, labeling all these. We got the big R dates, and this is a Ganiporus, really beautiful Ganiporum. Freebie, nice. What? <laughs> Thank you, sir. JCC Burning Lava, this is one of the Zoa that I picked up. They have some really nice Ganiporus collections, so I just kind of struck them all up. And finally, guys, a Goat Torch. Here are all the corals from Joker Coral. I'm gonna get them acclimated, situated in the tank, and then we're gonna take a look once I have a chance to uh, settle in and open up. If you've been following this channel, you know I'm the last person you expect a DIY from. But yet, here we are. After much deliberation, in order to raise the pH of this tank, I've decided to dose kelp. People usually dose kelp to maintain alkalinity and calcium. Uh, it's great because equal part alkalinity, equal part calcium. Uh, I do not necessarily need to dose kelp to maintain those levels, but I do want to bring the pH of the tank up from about 7.8, 7.9 to something beyond 8. So with that in mind, I've looked into CO2 scrubber, but that's just too much work because like every five or six days, you may have to change the media and it get pricey. So the other alternative is possibly doing calc. So in order to do calc, I do have most of the parts at home. Uh, I figure I'll just rig something up together. Uh, first thing first, I got two of these uh, five gallon jugs. I have these, um, I think this is the four milliliter inside diameter and five milliliter outside diameter um, uh, dosing hose. The acrylic tube is slightly larger. I feel like it's probably five, mil five milliliter inside diameter and probably six on the outside. But I, was, but I was able to stretch the silicone tube to fit. And I drew a small hole on it. As you can see, I just kind of stack on the super glue gel because um, I have a lot of them just kind of like sitting around. I made it so that the tubing does not touch the bottom of the container. I got about inch, inch and a half at the bottom. Uh, this is because calc water is gonna settle. Uh, you do not want to dose the stuff at the bottom. Uh-oh, what's happening over there? I have the uh, tube raked up, pulling the cut water from around this area. Hose runs into the Dostronic, and Dostronic um, have a hose that is gonna run into a sump, but for now, I'm trying to prime the hose. Uh, here we go, yay! All right, let me just say that um, I cannot believe this is working because uh, my DIY skills is, it left a lot to be desired for. This looks good, right? And Leon is just kind of like Velcro. Talk about Velcro fish, this is like a Velcro baby, yay! You know what, that's okay, because I know that they grow fast and then, and I know in the future, the table's gonna be turned. Like, I'll be the one trying to Velcro to him and he'll be like, ah, he, doesn't, he wouldn't want anything to do with me. So I'm gonna try to enjoy it while it lasts. Two days later. Look guys, pretty excited. I am as well because today we finally hit one of the tank goal. I've only recently heard about this local company called the Reefer Spot. They do not have a physical store, but they have been doing a lot of uh, aquarium maintenance around the area. But Wayne and I got to talking, he found out that I'm looking for Leto and Theus. Just so happened that he got some in stock, so I bought some from them and he actually helped me treat them and then quarantine them. He actually threw in a free frag of red Ganipora, so thank you. This actually came perfectly as I'm trying to build out my Ganipora uh, garden. You see that the water is slightly yellow because um, he was treating these fish um, but they look super super healthy and really active. According to Wayne a lot of articles that I read online it seems that the female light tail amphibious does well in odd numbers. Uh, in my case because my tank is not really big I'm starting out with three and we'll see how they do. I do believe that eventually the dominant female is going to morph into the male. At that point I'm not sure if I need to add another female or what's going to happen next but we will see. One of the trickiest things about keeping 
this is that they need to be fed multiple times a day. So just like one time feeding is not enough. That is also why I actually got the uh, Avast Auto Feeder. Uh, so far it's been performing really well. It's feeding about five times a day at the moment. I may step it up a little bit, uh, but basically amphibious, they just kind of pick food from water column the entire day. So um, that's one of the reasons why I got the Avast Auto Feeder because I know that at some point, I'm gonna try some amphibious in this tank. Acclimation is done, they're good to go in. Again, I'm gonna use my hand, not gonna use net, just not a big fan of net. At the same time, I understand that hand is probably not the best for the fish slime coat as well, but it's gonna be a really quick transfer. She's about to take off, she's about to take off, look at that. Nope, right back. <laughs> Still spooked out. There's the envious, there's the other one. In the back, see him? And this, this girl, I don't know, she's just kinda of like in the corner. It's not even hiding in a crevice. At least we know one is doing well, that's, that's great. Just hoping for the, the other two to kind of get bold, start swimming out and meet up. Oh my God, guys, look at this is happening. That's one of the new ones. That's the one up front. I guess I saw the whole squad of fish going past and she peeked out, joined the squad. Now she's back into the the crevice. The next morning. All right, we first check this out. This is the second batch of the baby brine shrimp that I'm hatching. And look at this hatch rate, man. This is awesome. And this is 24 hours. So these seems to hatch faster. I'm not sure. Actually, I know what I did. I used the uh, tank water this time and just add some tap water. Uh, totally guesstimated the salinity, but seems to be working well. Look at those guys. The two of them are out swimming about. Uh, one of them still seems, seems to be sleeping right here. Uh, I guess like overnight, the other two found each other, but this one is still kind of like, where's everybody? All right, well, I just uh, dump a lot of reef nutrition products because today, Friday is when I uh, do liquid dosing. I do like twice a week. So I dump some of them. I'm gonna throw some of the um, baby brine shrimp in there. I don't want to use all of them because I want some of them for the... See here, let's harvest it. Man, they're so dense that the water takes a while to leak out too. So I'm gonna, there's still so much. All right, so there's a nice chunk of it. There's still a lot in here. I'm gonna add the rest to the mangrove tank. One second. And here's the mangrove tank. There we go. Bon Appetit. Oh, look at these. Size-wise, oh, look at them, immediately reacting. I think size-wise, these are roughly the size of the ticker pods. Uh, but again, this is just kind of like guesstimate based on visual. Ultimately, um, these are mainly for the uh, African blue striped pipefish. I want them to kind of supplement the snacks. And of course, we're gonna come back up here with the roof nutrition product and dose some of the liquid product as well. I have a good meal today. Look at them. And we're gonna put this back in here and we'll harvest once again later tonight. Now that I've used it twice, I have to say this is awesome. This makes it so easy. I just added some tank water, added some fresh water. Um, I didn't even measure it. I just kind of haphazardly added some fresh water, added the uh, brine shrimps and voila, within 24 hours, you started getting baby brine shrimp. It's just so, so easy. Price-wise, initially I'm kind of hesitant because once I got it, it's kind of like a couple pieces of plastic and that's it, and you want to charge $25. But seeing how well it works, totally worth it. I, I really like it. More moments later. Yeah, Leon actually really like the fish. At least I think he does. <laughs> Emily he swears that he does not. But anyways, I, I'm dosing the tank with the Hikari Mysis shrimps, uh, trying to make sure the um, light tail amphibious get some food. And both of them, even though not super enthusiastically, um, they do go after the Mysis, which is good. So at least I know that they're getting some food. And I've been dosing a tank with the baby brine shrimp as well. I just want to visually see that these new fish are eating, and they are. I think they're getting more and more aggressive in terms of, uh, now that they know that the frozen mysis shrimp is food. Now, the one I'm really worried about is this guy right here. And I'm gonna swing over here. Usually, yep, there she is. That's her home right here. She'll either peek her hair out this way or this way, but tonight I just see her venture out like around the rock. And whenever the other two gets near, she actually go right back into this, this little uh, crevice right here. That's her home. 
Look at that, she comes out. I mean, she looks healthy. She's not, she does not have a sunken stomach or anything like that. And she's really nimble and she's really aware. I feel like she's a lot more aware than those two other fishes. Those other fishes are kind of there. She's a nerd. <laughs> yeah, it. she's smart. Okay, let's see if she takes this. <laughs> she didn't see it. But yeah, she's definitely aware and she's healthy. So maybe she just needs some more time. Nerd? And my biggest worry is her swimming to the rollerboard of anatomy, which is capture a mice shrimp, by the way. Not sure if you guys saw it. But it seems that she's smart enough to avoid it. Same thing with, with the uh, other MVS as well. She's not afraid of my finger, actually. Look, she actually looks at it with interest. So she's definitely aware. Same thing with these girls right here, too. Interesting. I wonder what it takes to get her out of the of her hole. Maybe if I ask her nicely. Come on. Come on out. No, <laughs> she's like what? She is looking. You can tell. She's she's so aware. It's so it's so weird. This is so weird. I would not think a Antheus being aware of her surrounding that much, but she is. You can really tell that she's looking. All right, well, she's smart. We'll give her some time. We're not gonna push it. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, so the Amphius, as you can see, at least two of them are doing extremely well. Uh, it's really hard to do the color and pattern justice. Um, I've seen a lot of videos of the Lytale Amphius online, and until I really see them in person up close, it's really hard to really appreciate them. They're simply absolutely gorgeous. Um, I understand that D depending on the locale that they came from, they may have slightly different color pattern. The ones out from Africa, they're a little bit more orange. And also my buddy, DMV Refill Juan, recently got a trio of female uh, light tail envious as well. And one of them actually turned to male and also that guy looks gorgeous. And he was telling me that depending on where your envious comes from, like which parts, they actually morph a little bit different, which is really interesting to me. And he was like, yeah, man, I'm excited to see like what yours morph into or what 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 he ends up looking like. So I'm really looking forward to it as well. Um, but I guess we're gonna give him some time to uh, settle in. I, I'm really not worried about these two. They seem to be adjusting really well, especially now that I know that they they readily eat mice. I can at least do that one time a day. The rest of the time of the day, um, the auto feeder with the mix of like different food should be able to keep them filled. Now let's also take a look at the corals I got from Joker Corals as well as the reefer spot. I'm gonna show these corals under uh, my regular light first, which is uh, more white. So right here, we got the torch, we got the burning lava zoas, we got the different ghanis, and that one, I believe that's a Looney Tune, that's the date night. They all look really cool, especially the Looney Tune under, under the white lights. Uh, these are from Joker Corals. Um, up front, this is the freebie I got from him, which turns out to be worth a lot of money. This is the Angus of Athena, I believe, and they have it on their website for $170, which is insane. Now, you may be looking at it like, oh, I mean, it looks it looks okay. They look kind of like tannish. What do you mean? But in just a moment, I'm going to turn on blue and you'll see exactly what I mean. To the left, we got the uh, freebie red Ganipora from uh, the reefer spot, Wayne. Uh, again, thank you so much. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful even under the white lights. But and once again, we're gonna turn on the blue and uh, we'll see shortly. And I think like once these corals get acclimated a little bit, I'm gonna remove them from the frag plug and then mount them on this rock right here. Because I do feel like the Ganipora appreciate like a stronger flow and maybe slightly higher, like just a little bit. So I think like just bringing up a little bit, um, especially because this rock is more underneath the light, um, it will have a higher power value. And of course, as you can see, the things that get blow past this rock, it got definitely got some uh, nice flow going. So I think that would be a nice spot uh, for the Ganiporas. So without further ado, let's turn on the Atinic Blue. And guys, here it is. If you look at a lot of uh, online vendors, this is kind of like the coloration that you may be more used to. Heavy Atinic Blue. And a lot of these corals uh, under heavy Atinic Blue, they fluoresce in an insane amount. In fact, I think like my camera is actually not picking it up too well uh, compared to what I'm seeing with my eyes. In fact, I think the iPhone with the orange filter probably have a uh, better representation of what I see um, with my eyes. But 
I'll try my best. So as you can see here, this is the Go Torch in person. It's kind of like glowing orange, which is awesome. That's a burning lava. It's not really fully opened yet, but you see the color coming in, as well as the Date Night, as well as the Looney Tungani. And right here, the Looney Tungani just absolutely gorgeous. Got the nice yellow center of orange tentacles. And just look at the red Ganipora. How awesome is this? This is actually interesting because in the past, right, when we only have like metal halides, T5, so power compacts, we don't really, really have heavy blue, um, at least not to the extent of like blue LEDs. And I think with the events of blue LED, it really opens up the coral market to this whole different kind of like aesthetics. Like now a lot of people seem to like this really, really heavy actinic fluorescent coral color under heavy blue lights. I like it, but I'm not a huge fan of it. I much prefer the more um, balanced look. I mean, in my opinion, like even my quote unquote balanced look is already uh, pretty blue heavy compared to what I'm used to. But I do like that mix of like fluorescent and white light. However, looking at coral coloration like this, you can kind of see like why certain people like their tank a lot more blue. Thing just pops so much more. It's kind of insane actually. All right, this is probably as much blue as I can do it. I'm gonna turn it back up to normal, one second. This is probably my preference. I try to white balance what you see to what I see with my own eyes as closely as possible. So I kind of like this balance. Not super heavy blue, but it definitely has a nice blue tint to it. I kind of reorganized the Euphelia Gardens a little bit so that they group a little bit better. I think we're almost there in terms of Euphelias. I may add some more torches and I may add some more, um, more intense color Euphelias. But in terms of like large colonies, I think we're pretty set. And surprise, surprise, I actually have two or three other Gorgonians similar to that coming soon. Uh, so we'll do, do a little Gorgonian garden as well and that's gonna like really fill out the tank as well. I don't see a lot of Gorgonians being incorporated into reef tanks, um, at least like not in terms of a garden. So I'm really looking for doing something like that as well. The other thing I wanna touch on is what I talked about earlier in this video and that is setting up the uh, Kalkwasser dosing. I ran it for a week, worked beautifully. And after a week I used this much. So I think this jug can probably last me a week and a half, which is fantastic. I am, let's see. In the past, my pH has been sitting at about 7.7, 7.8, it is really low. Uh, now you can see that it's about 7.9. Actually recently it started going a little bit lower again, which is kind of odd. Because as I started dosing calc, it kind of went up to eight and stay around eight for about two days. But um, for the last two days, it started dipping down again, which is interesting, but it has not really dipped down below 7.9, so that's okay, I'll take it. The DKH, I've been juggling it because I'm also dosing two parts, ATI Coral Essential Pro, and I slowly dial back the two parts as I dose more of the uh, Calc Wasser. And I'm gonna do that because I wanna raise the pH. But as you know, Calc Wasser also doses alkalinity and calcium. So I need to slowly dial back the two parts until I find the perfect balance. And here is where I really need to give a shout out to the Alcatronic Auto Tester. Because without this auto testing, which does a test for me every four hours, there's simply no way I could I can dial things in like this uh, so quickly. It will take me like weeks to really find the sweet spot. But the fact that every four hours I can see which direction the DKH is moving and which direction the pH is moving, it allows me to really tweak uh, my calc wasser and then adjust the two parts in response. And just in case you're curious, this is the amount I'm dosing each day, um, ATI. I dial it all the way back from like 10 milliliter per day to five. Uh, calc washer, I'm actually dosing, let's see, 1200 milliliter a day, which sounds like a lot, but if you think about it, it also helps me out with the top off water as well. So I don't need to top off the water as, as often now because I'm uh, dosing calc washer. Next thing I would try is probably start growing macroalgae in the refugium, have them on reverse life cycle. And if this really does not work, it's either gonna be a CO2 scrubber or I may have to drill the wall of the house and run an airline from outside in. Wait, what? So um, one way to raise pH is to bring fresh air in from the outside, right? Well, hook it up to skimmer. So what that involves is drilling a small hole, really small hole, to the wall, going outside, run the air pipe out. Upstairs, I was Why able to do it. Why did you your fish tank outside? All right, guys, so this update was pretty scattered because so much has been going on this whole week, so I gotta kind of piece them together in, um, in some kind of order. But guess what? Next week, 
even more update because your boy actually won a coral raffle locally and I'm gonna go pick up some corals tomorrow and there are some nice pieces in there so I can't wait to show you guys that and of course I'll give you guys updated to the third Amphius who was hiding all the time once again she's looking at me which is kind of weird so I hope you guys have a fantastic week and I'll see you next Sunday at 12 for PM shop bye by the way guys we are the United States don't forget that I have to be really careful because the third Amphius has finally decided to come out and join the rest of the gang, but she is really skittish. <laughs>